replacing that and that led to some discussion with at the time Mark Month and uh, the need to do some serious work at the main lift station that was just to the south which would be where the ball field is that main lift station just to the northeast right there and the idea was you could either rehab that station and spend a lot of money doing that or um, move that lift station down by the wastewater plant and actually get rid of a whole chunk of force main that was next to the river that was aging and so that ultimately ended up being the project was start with the trunk sewer uh, from the where that lift station was up by the ball field running that trunk sewer down to the wastewater plant setting a new station down at the plant um, and then while we were looking at that I thought was do we need to replace the sewer on water street and it was a sewer that was from we think it was constructed somewhere in the 20s the oldest map we have is from 1935 and it shows all that sewer system so the thought was okay we need to redo some of that sewer at some point and it really made sense to get it out of water street and move it over to broadway so then that really involved that broadway and once we involved the sewer then it included redoing water um, so that's where that whole big project really originally came about um, we had planned on going all the way from Main Street down to Bowes, basically, um, in the original project, and we started down that design road. While we were going down uh, the road for design, uh, King Milling acquired the old Michigan Wire property, and so then they started looking at what do they want to do for plans, and there were some grade issues, elevation issues they had with trucks coming off their scales that are by the silos there. And so we, in essence, put the design for that section of Broadway between the railroad and the Ottawa on hold while King Milling figured out what they needed to do. Because our thought was we didn't want to spend any public money putting something in that maybe would have to get ripped out. Now, even though the city wouldn't have paid to do the rip out and the rebuild, it wouldn't have looked very good from a public perception perspective. So we held off on that design work and that reconstruction work on that section of Broadway. So, as we worked through and did all the other sections of Broadway, we got those done, and then we finally got some grades finalized with King Milling for that section. And so the change order that came before council was really to have the contractor, Cam again, Roodboats, finish the road reconstruction portion. So we got the road rebuilt and the curb work in so that King Milling can get back in there and, and run trucks as normal. Um, as you have seen, if you've been out there, King Milling at the same time did a bunch of their site work um, it's not all done yet, but they got their drive openings poured, so at least now it's functional for all the traffic that, that goes through there. Um, at this point now, we're looking at uh, making sure that everybody's on the same page as far as restoration goes, um, because we have um, really public right-of-way. Um, Broadway Street is a public right-of-way. Normally in public right-of-way, we would put uh, grass back, just like we did to the south. However, this is a, a, can be a weird exception because 
Um, if you notice on Ottawa, when we redid the parkway on the north and south side of Ottawa, King Milling was using that for a lot of parking, and so we put that back as pavement. Um, in addition, the west side of Broadway, north of Ottawa, King Milling had spent some money and paved that because they were going to be using that area both for some parking and it gets easier for them to keep it clean if it's paved because they have a lot of chaff and things that blow off the silos. Um, so we had a meeting out there last Friday to talk about how we want to do some restoration work out there. The thought was is that the east side, um, the areas that aren't currently paved would go back to grass and be green. That would kind of continue that green parkway. The other reason that we want to kind of keep that green is because the sidewalk goes along that side now. So if you're a pedestrian walking there, it's nice to have some green next to you and not just be in a sea of pavement. Um, however, the west side, the thought is that we would put pavement back in that parkway area behind the curb um, just to facilitate, again, vehicles and keeping that area clean was the original thought. Um, we have a little chunk of, of sidewalk, a short <coughs> five foot piece to make a last connector to some pavement up by the railroad tracks. But, so really what's happening is, although we would normally like all that stuff wrapped up into one big project, because of the timing and trying to coordinate with the King Milling site, now we're kind of attacking these little pieces one piece at a time to wrap things up. But I think this restoration is the last bit of it for this chunk of Broadway. The, the only thing left big picture wise that we need to do is work out something at some point between the city and King Milling for the rail grade crossing because the railroad that goes through there, there's one set of tracks that's part of the, the main railroad and belongs to the railroad. The other four sets of tracks are sidings that King Milling owns. So we'll need to coordinate a little bit on how that all works. One kind of an odd thing about this crossing um, is that this area was platted or subdivided before the railroad came in, which is really unusual. Um, so in this particular case, the city owns the road right away, and the railroad crosses through city property, um, which is different than, say, that chunk of Water Street to the east. It's not that way. That little chunk hadn't been platted yet, so when the railroad <coughs> cut through there, the railroad owns the right of way, but the street, Old Water Street, had crossed the railroad. It's kind of the same thing on Hudson as well, as the railroad actually owns halfway across Hudson, oddly enough, but not all the way. So there's some, some interesting oddities there, but uh, like I say, I think that railroad crossing is a, is a bigger issue. Um, it's gonna take some thinking because there's some drainage issues there, and so we'll leave that for now. But we'd at least like to get the stretch from the railroad down to Ottawa wrapped up. And that's where we wanted some input to make sure everybody was on the same page of what does it need to look like. Is that change order with all the costs available for us to pull up now? To see what those so, costs Yeah, I can pull it up from last. Yeah, the, for, the, for the street work and the curb work, it was just a smidge over 88000 I believe. And that meeting, uh, the mayor and I, and Mike, and Ryan, and then three representatives from King Milling were there and kind of walked the site and reviewed that a little bit. Um, oh, and that's for, would be for the paving and the, this is the first day. I think it's order. further down. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's for the street and the, correct, and the roadway work. So the pay, um, from our council meeting, I was under the understanding there was major work needed to be done on the railroad crossing, but really there's one large pothole there that's six or eight feet in diameter that DPW could patch that, and that kind of solves that. Um, the exploratory work that was done by K&R to locate electric and stuff, the jacking process, that was patched. So that, that really is a done deal. So the railroad part of it really is just a pothole that needs to be patched at this point. Yeah. And oh, down the road, yeah. that will have to be addressed by King Melling, mainly because it's their sightings and, and the railroad and stuff. But I don't think there's a big deal going on with that part of it. Not now, you're correct. Yep. Yeah, we can. We don't need to deal with the railroad crossing today or anything like that. Yep. And so then the, the other issue we have is that 15 feet of asphalt between the curb and King Melling's property, which is right of way. Um, they did pay once to have that paved at whatever the dollar amount 
can you help me find what the cost is on that on there? That was further up on that letter. Eleven thousand yep. dollars. Correct. Um, that's kind of a tough spot um, for King Milling um, and us. Uh, the King Milling paved right away, which then if it needs to be tore out, um, that's part of it. As it turned out, it really didn't need to be tore out. 2020 hindsight, we wouldn't have touched that much. But at the time, we didn't know. And I don't, you know, King Milling was questioning why would they pay to pave it again when it was there. It should have been, you know, we, so we did restore the paving on Ottawa Street as part of the project. Yes, that one we did, yep. So we kind of set a precedent there. You know, in, in our last meeting, we talked about really it should be King Milling's responsibility for this, but we kind of set the precedent when we took care of it on Ottawa Street that we take care of it here too to restore it. What's the lifetime of the entire project? 25 years, 30 years? Yeah, or, roadway what, pavement. What's it look like here? If we maintain it, if that the pavement's maintained, and you do some maintenance on it, you can probably 30 years. So you're, normal you're looking at you know cost per year of less than 500 dollars basically. I mean, if you prorate it. Mm -hmm. So you know, if, if, if you've got it, if you if you've got the project the way you want, and King Million agrees to that. City agrees to it. Uh, it seems to me that's the first step, and then you're you're arguing over the eleven thousand. I you know I don't know if everybody takes a haircut or not. Split three ways. I I, I don't know. I, that's that's a question for powers to be. But it seems to me as though the first goal is to make sure you got the project the way you want it, mm -hmm. and then look at it as a long-term project of 25, 30 years. All of a sudden, it, it becomes dual. Was there any <clears throat> utilities or is there anything in that right away? In, oh, behind the curb? The column. I, I, you said, right? uh, no, well, our stuff, our city stuff, is pretty much under the pavement for the most part. The water and the, and the sanitary is. The storm is on the east side. Um, however, I believe there's a the power line that got buried is on the west side. Yeah. So and that's where they want concrete uh, repair? Well, asphalt. 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 That's asphalt. probably in conduit though, isn't it? It was, yes, it is put yeah. in, so that, but it was, so, that was put in after so we took all that out. So I guess in some ways either low light power didn't have to rip out that pavement because we took it out as part of the, the Broadway project and so they were able to trench through there with their conduit without more pavement disturbance. But we shouldn't have to dig that up because it's in conduit. If there's ever a problem yeah. with the lines, we can just pull yeah, more yeah. stuff through. Hopefully, the yes, correct. So we shouldn't be back tearing that out again in the foreseeable future. It should not be light powers project anyway. Well, I think when they did that, they buried, if I remember right, they buried several sleeves at that time for future because I think we weren't so. sure what was going to go on with the, the fairground. So a couple extra lines. Yeah, they, they built redundancy into the system. But. Yeah, I'm sorry. I wasn't there when they put that conduit in, but yeah, right. Some of it carries primary power for uh, King Milling and the, the extra ones right. that they put those in. Which makes there's me also, think. There's these. also another request that needs to be considered too in the right of way. I'll walk up and kind of explain it. So when they submitted their site plan, um, they were told by the Planning Commission that to make it look nice. So um, they're going to be building their building in this area and in this area is right away and they're going to be putting a pretty nice sign on the building that says King Milling but they'd also like to have something right in the right away in this okay. area a little up. further north a little it's further right, north yep, right, there. Yep, right in that area yep right in that area there's and yeah there's a bump out and so in that area they want to put a sign in and in actuality it actually makes sense to do but one of the things is we've never done we don't, allow, we don't normally allow signs in the right of way. And it's not something that I can just automatically grant under the ordinance, whether it's, if it was a planning, I could, I could, I could approve it. But it's, there's gonna be a request for a sign. It's gonna be roughly one of these, by one of these, it'll be a monument sign um, that has King Milling's logo on it. And um, 
I kind of need, I mean, I'm really going to need direction on what it does. Does the council, the planning commission want to see that? Does the council, you know, do you want to say no? I mean, we have, we have the right to, it's, it, it is our right of way. So we do have, we do have control of it, but I'm going to need, I'm going to need some direction from the, uh, when that sign does come, whether or not we want to allow it or not. Their position is, is that they'd like to, because it really is only King Milling customers, trucks, employees and stuff should be past that point. So they're trying to establish that, hey, from this point on, it's only King Milling business. If you come up through the fairgrounds headed north on Broadway, really Ottawa is your only way out. And that's the point where they're just trying to clarify that to the general public that is still trying to drive through there thinking they can get to Main Street. Right. This is only King Milling. Yeah. I get that, but if we put a celebrity put that sign right there and that bump out, I mean, that's the we're going to hear, well, you get that is really is King Milling's private driveway yep. that the city built. And that's what's going to come down to, yeah. right? I hear about it all the time. And I try to tell them, no, it is still a city road. But if that sign goes there, perception, perception yeah. is, is we lied. We got bigger things to worry about come November than a, than a sign. And right. we don't need people pissed off that we gave away. We are, yeah, we already put up a no outlet. So. so. But there, when I went down there and I looked at that, that sign really does not have to go there because yeah, they've got they to move it back a little bit. Yeah. Was, yeah, or the head of their drive. Because their it drive. can still go. When you drive down there, that bump out sits right here. Mm -hmm. Our sidewalk runs here. And there's no reasoning that that sign can't sit this way. They can do some landscaping or do whatever and put it there. Then it's on their property. Well, they have a, re sidewalk. Yeah. a retention yeah. pond, too. That, that bump out's going to change a little bit. That's, that's coming out and getting paved over a little. That's going to be straightened out some. Yeah. I'm, I'm with Marty. I think the perception is that we're giving the city property. Can people still walk through there, or right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's still public property. There's, there's a misconception, I think, um, that King Milling asked for that to happen, mm -hmm. and that was not the no, case at all. Right. They went along with it when it was presented right. to them. And, um, That's because it never got explained talked properly, about yeah, enough, yeah. right? And right. just like what we're getting ready to do, we know we got to make it crystal clear, and so there's a lot of miscommunication. That, uh, Saturday, we had four people come in and say, well, why didn't the gate back up? You know, that's not their driveway. They got their own private driveway and they said, no, that's not what it is. So I hear about it quite a bit. They have plenty of property frontage where they could put a sign. And, yeah. and they're building that retention pond on the northeast side. And if you're going to landscape that anyway, that's a perfect place for but I watched how the trucks now have to come in there, make a swing. The railroad track's taking more of an abuse now with the weights and the swings than it's ever has in the past because they're coming out with loaded tankers or before they're coming up on Main Street with it. So that track never has taken that kind of abuse. I sat there for a half hour and I watched and where that pad is or where we, we dug there sometimes there's trucks that actually drive through that even though it's that far over they're still because they're trying to get past each other so i get it it's a it's a pothole we can patch that that's no problem but the repairing anything around that railroad track that shouldn't even be our dime because no. it's it's just never taking that kind of abuse that it's taken now and it's taking a pounding Right. Well, and that's kind of the conclusion we came to yeah. right now, that we're just going to patch that pothole, yeah, and that's all that's going to happen. Yeah. Which we've done for umpteen yeah. years. So we do it daily up and down Monero. Yeah. <laughs> Scrape some of that up a little bit. Marty, you're, you're saying that there's plenty of room <coughs> if they move the sign behind the sidewalk. Yeah. Yeah, because that's in that. There's absolutely no no reason not to right. request that. They can put it at a slam. Which is even better because visually, if it's at a slant, your, your eyes are looking left. Right. And if you remember, Bruce, when, when we talked about their parking lot and everything else, there was a requirement for so much trees and right. shrub, and right. they didn't want to put them all there. So right. I said, well, you've got that right. that lot. Go ahead and run them down that sidewalk. Yeah. So and also along the back, along the 
her, but we <coughs> liked about that. Yeah. That was part of that whole discussion. But I, 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 I would agree. I don't, I don't see any reason why they should put a sign out in the middle of the road. Is the purpose of the sign to make sure? I mean, is it is it going to be telling people you can't go any further? Go out of Ottawa? Is that the I purpose? That's, of that? that's, that's their goal. Of it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. but there's nothing to indicate that. I mean, they, there's really nothing on the sign. But Broadway is still that. up. But just say King Millie Trucks only or something. Just, just gonna say King. Well, they're just going to put yeah. their sign of like kind of this is our stuff, even though it's yeah. a public road. Yeah. It just. Well. And I, the sign now says not a throughway or says there's some type of sign. No, 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 no. So I want to go back to what Brian just said about, or I guess you said, that that bump out is going to change. Changing why? Oh, well, we've got right at that corner right at Ottawa where that driveway is, there's a the little puddle that's occurred. And so we're going to work out modifying that curve. We have a storm catch basin right there that will turn into an actual curb grate and bump that curb out to make sure that that drainage gets to that structure. So you're going to have to add asphalt to do that? Um, it'll, actually, we're going to do it in concrete because okay. I can keep it as a visual. That way it'll, it'll make trucks do that little, they can see that corner and they won't try cutting it as much. Yeah. And, and it's not worth trying to pave. I'd rather not have a little Yeah, no patches with that brand new road. No, I will make it concrete, make it strong. But so this is mainly because the grade wasn't proper on the asphalt. This is our fix. We had a shot, yep. We had, what happened is we, we had a break, a two-tenths break between last year's survey shot and this spring survey shot. I'm not sure why. I don't know. We've checked all the instruments. Not sure why we had the break, but it was our break, so we're taking care of that. At no cost to the city. Correct. Excellent. Thank you. We should do more of those no cost to the city. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we try not to make mistakes for you guys. Um, since I was to get one. Yeah. Why is there a bump out? What's the purpose? I mean, was the bump out planned? Yeah, it's I was kind of part of the curve. It's thing. actually part of the curve. So the idea was it's a small psychological effect that when someone's coming north on that, 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 that looks more like a drive entrance than a continuation of the road. That was really the idea that prompts people to turn. It's just an illusion. Yep. I right. think it opens it up too when you come around it. You see the road instead of the side of buildings, right? So you know you can't, maybe I can't get out that way. Maybe the trucks are back though. To think it centers everybody more when they're coming. Because when that was a throughway, people used to fly. Oh yeah. The street, fly down that street. Andy, with our sign ordinance, uh, would they need to come before us for that sign? They need to come before our city council for a variance. For a variance. That sign, yeah, the ordinance requires that signs got to be two feet off right away. So in the right of way. If they put it two feet off, off the right of way, though. It's two, if it's two feet off, then no, it would just come to me. Okay. And if it meets the size and placement standards, all the, that would be fine, yeah. So in the right of way, they would have to come to council. They would have to as his own board. Which would answer your question, Mike. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think our recommendation then would be to put it two feet behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when we look at that stuff, one of the first things that we look at is, is there Variance should be a last resort, so if there are places right. you can put it to make sense, or is this really your only option? And if so, if there's a reasonable place I can put it that's two feet off, then we just don't do that and not have the variance. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we're back to the asphalt. That's, that's in our right, in the grand day, paid it once. My question to that is, did they just pave it to pave it, or did they come and ask whoever the powers would be at the time, can we pave this even though it's in the right of way and we understand, because there had to be an understanding at some point, they knew there was utilities and things underground, but there's a big possibility that might have to be tore up. Here's the other question I didn't ask it right because I had to leave, but if they had only taken the, what was it, eight feet or whatever, that they took 15 and they should only take an 8, is that what we... Well, I mean, it, they it could have taken 14 and left a yeah. foot to work with. I mean. Yeah, in hindsight, what, what we really did is we, we took out to the right-of-way because at the time we knew K&R would need some space for dewatering equipment. And we didn't know, given the utilities, which side they would need to put that equipment on. 
so we, we took the asphalt out of there so that would open up that option of going either side with the dewatering equipment. And that was all in the original plans, right? Correct. And in original plans, what does that show going back in that area? We didn't show anything yet. We had left that up to deciding what everybody wanted to go back. So we had not finalized that, that restoration decision. And you're correct. Normally in a project, we'd have all those answers up front and when we do the, the, the drawings. It's just that particular area was in some flux, so we left the restoration up for a I, later date decision. I, I think that's what makes it very flustering. Yeah. I know it does for me personally because I understand. Yeah. You know, I, previous life, I was involved with these things, so it drives me absolutely insane, but that's, I guess that's me. Yeah. No, you're correct. Normally, every other project, that's what, in all the other sections, that's what we do. We work it out all ahead of time. This one stretch was the one because of the flux of Key doing their site and those other things, we weren't able to nail all that down right from the get-go. But otherwise, on a normal project, yes, we would. Do we know exactly where the sleeves are? How far off the curb they are? I don't know. There's an easement that was drawn up. All there was an, there was an easement that was drafted. And I just got to know actually approved it. to check with Low Lake Power to make sure if they set any handholds or handholds <coughs> along that stretch before we do any paving. So right. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was getting at. I'll double check with Ryan. You know, if they're, <coughs> if they're three feet off the back of that curb, then I know it's <coughs> and I know odds of going down and digging it up are slim to none, but there's always that chance. You can't guarantee that, you know, we're not going to have a failure and it's going to have to get ripped up and we always said dirt's cheaper than asphalt. So. Yeah, there is a, just a small stretch on the south and next to the two, I guess I'll say the two southern silos, the ones that are just north of Ottawa, but the two east silos. So right along those, Mm -hmm. There's a stretch where the water main, to get around some existing uh, utilities that were there before we were able to them out, we had to bump the water main over a little bit. You're so talking right here? Right there, there's a stretch, yep, as you head north on Broadway, probably about 150 feet of it, where you've got water main that's behind the curb before it jumps back out into the, under the street. Okay. So we have a little stretch there where we have some water. No, it would be nice if everything went perfectly according to plan and, and no missteps were ever made. Um, in our meeting on Friday, they pointed out that when they were putting up the big silo, they called the B mill or something there, that um, to get underneath, to build close to that, we had them um, bore a casing around the sewer on Water Street that cost them $350,000 to do. Oh, that was like five or six years ago. When they yeah, yeah, or it's probably three or four, but... Um, so they spent 350 to ensure the integrity of that line that we're about to abandon. And so, you know, they, they've got, they've made some big investment too in infrastructure. In a perfect world, had we known we were going to rework things, probably wouldn't have done that. But at the time, that was a needed thing and I'm sure it was done for a legitimate reason. Yeah, to protect the sewers from the... But, Load of the building on. So, did. Anyway. Oh, the, the, the curb. Where it comes out of that lawn, you got the concrete pad that comes out back to the street. Of the scale? Yeah, that needs to be widened. I did notice that when we walked through. Yeah. It's like we took. See where the corners dip in. Yeah, we where took. It used to be and where it is. Yeah, now. It, to me it looks like it should have been like 16 feet. Now we got them down to like 12 feet. Yeah, it was, it was intended to line up with the scale because. Uh, Jim Doyle was saying that they did not want trucks to turn too soon because if they turn too soon, the back tires wink the scale around and, and mess it up. So we purposely mm -hmm. tried to keep it visually oh, narrow so that the trucks have to go try to come out further before they start turning. That was the intent. I mean, we could always add a little bit more in there, and, but it, it, all it does is, well, that's the intent, was just to create a visual narrowness so the yeah. truck drivers stay coming straight out of the scale as long as possible. Yeah, I just noticed that when we walked by the yeah. Yeah. So no, that was a design thing. Some of them had and, cut the corner. You know, initially, they asked me to meet with them first before they talked to the city, and I went, they said, you know, this is a lot narrower than it used to be. Well, then, when Brian's there, they go, well, you know, Brian says, you did this to keep, you know, then they kind of changed their tune a little bit. Yeah. Um, it, it does make sense to 
keep from tweaking the scale. So I'm not sure if that really needs to be done anymore. But I, I think they kind of agreed with the logic of how it was designed, and that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we did it not to say it on concrete. We did it to try to help help them on their scale. Moving forward, whose responsibility is then is to maintain that asphalt? The cities, if we lay it down there, or does that fall back on King Milling 25 years from now? We're not around. Who takes care of that? Well, they want that asphalt to keep up with what they're required to do by the health department. That I don't think is our problem. I wouldn't think so. But just the whole in our right away. Yeah, right we, we, we need agree. We need agreement to, to lock that in. Sure. That's what we want. So this part of the paving is eleven thousand. What did we spend on Ottawa for paving? Do you have a ballpark idea? Oof. No, I know. Is that thirty thousand? I know it wouldn't have been that much because we would have done that. We did the street and the curb work anyway. Um, the extra paving we did on Ottawa was on that south side. And then a little bit of a fill in on the north. So it would have been maybe been a little less, maybe seven thousand maybe. Okay. I just wondered the scope. Yeah. Well both bids were within a couple hundred bucks. If we did seven grand worth of work for their parking already, we don't have to do eleven more. We should eat about four grand. Right? Yeah. We tolerate the pork. I don't want to think of the stomach, but the rest, just because it isn't right away, it isn't in. We do have utilities down there. Someday we're going to have to dig it up. We don't know. So dirt's cheaper, dirt and grass is cheaper than that. That's my opinion, but. It's got to be their responsibility to get things dug up. Mm -hmm. yep. well, I know they paid for it once, but they got the use out of it for how many years? Right? Eventually it was going to have to be done again anyway if they wanted to keep it as well, not their trees or whatever, plants. But, um, Where are we going to leave? The table, the change order for the last meeting. No, we put No, the no, change order was because that was for just road work. Okay, the road work. Okay. So we, we left we, the discussion for the restoration up. Right. we got to go back there to the mill and tell them everybody's thoughts instead of just ours. You know what I mean? Now we have 15 opinions instead of two. And they're open to it, and so are we. I don't think it's my way or the highway. It's <laughs> either side. But. All right, and they decide. <coughs> so are, are we talking that we're going to cover 4,000 and the rest is on them, or they're going to cover it all? I didn't know where. What about just splitting it? Man, there's that too. Mm -hmm. They may, now that there's going to be grass across the street, they have the retention pond, they may say, you know what, let's just do grass because we're going to be mowing and trimming the rest of this, that, that would be an option for them too. Didn't they want it paved so the trucks could pull over it's there? A, Wasn't that part of it? I think it's more of the grass and dirt. Yeah, they're just under a lot of scrutiny to keep things clean there, yeah, so it was easier yeah. to sweep that. And a lot of their stuff is underground, so when it blows off the... Like you were at that meeting, what was your opinion? I, they, definitely, they definitely didn't want to pay for it, that was for sure. Okay. Um, they um, need a new office. They, uh, they, um, they definitely didn't want to pay for it. That was one thing. I, I, Brian is correct. They didn't want to. I mean, they, the biggest issue for them is that you know they don't. They would rather not have grass because it's something they have to maintain. But they are going to have grass in that area, so they're going to have a lawn service coming in and, and cleaning that up. We felt it was when we just, when we talked about that with them. Even on the right on the east side of the street, there's an area where. There's grass now. They wanted they wanted us to consider just to put concrete there, and we kind of just decided then and there. Well, you got a lawn service mowing your side. You just go and maintain that. It's right. It's in the right of way. It's your responsibility. And when we said that, they never really they really never really balked at it. Right. And they may agree to grass across the street right. on they this may. site once 
it, it's it's not like I'm. It's nothing to do with them. It's I would have the same concerns for anybody that would you know want to put have us put asphalt back into a you know into a right of way. We need to be consistent. Yeah. Well, there have been. I don't. And I think we are saying that you know it's right of way and it should. You know, we need to get in there. We need to get in there. We're not going to put asphalt in every time. But plus, you can't 100 percent rule out that we won't need to get in. Correct. If you do that, it'd be a whole other conversation. If there was nothing down there. Right. The fact that the water maybe yeah. runs underneath part yeah. of the. The other thing is, is they, we had such a hard time, my opinion, getting past. Why did they dig 15 feet? Well, okay, great. Here's your explanation. Ask, they asked you one time, four or five feet back. We answered the question, and they just would not move past it, wouldn't move past it. So we didn't get, I don't think, as far into the discussion of what to do next, because they would not jump that hurdle. We cannot go back in time and decide to only take four feet or eight feet or whatever it was. And they must have asked Brian the same question four or five times as they did. Asked and answered. Let's either move on or I don't know what we're sitting here for. But so we got a clear answer on the pothole. That's mm -hmm. just a basic pothole. Yeah, so we do that for everything else. You aren't told The, the, the yeah. sign seems like the Commission, everybody seems to be in agreement that should be on the other side and that doesn't have to go through us, to, right? And Mike can approve it. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to have to revisit this asphalt thing with them now that. We're all on the same page, I guess. Well, what do we want to tell them? We're willing to pay for four, we're willing to pay for nothing, or we're willing to split it? What, what are we... Or it just goes back to grass. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think it's any. No, that's what you got. Grass, obviously, would be the cheapest. Asphalt would be the most expensive, so... But keeping in mind what we've done in the past with other things, the right of way's always been grass. Yep. Once you get past the right away, you can do as you will. Right. You know, and if we had a sidewalk there, we from the curb to the sidewalk would have been grass, grass yep. and it would have been whatever they want on the back side. Even if we had tore it up, mm -hmm. we would have still went back and put the new asphalt on. So I guess that's kind of where. Dumb, dumb question. Why don't you put asphalt turf in there or something like that <laughs> instead of instead of Maybe actual free. grass? Yeah. yeah, you're talking papers. Maybe. You're talking something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's stuff it sticks might be, to it. It's yeah, it might be more clean. than concrete. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. That's the other it's thing. just a cleaning of everything. That or this, on the east side where the sidewalk ends and it pumps out around that gas. That, you know what I'm talking about? The hydrant there? Yeah. Okay. No, just north of the hydrant oh, where that yeah, pump out is where the fill sidewalk that. stops and then it picks up again. We're going to fill that little gap. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you couldn't go straight with it because all that consumer stuff was there. So you'd have to loop the sidewalk. And if those trucks are already there, they're either going to jog all the way around it, and that makes that driveway narrowing pointless, or they're going to run up on that sidewalk. Well, I think what Brian's talking about, there's like a 10-foot section between the south edge of the rails and the new sidewalk. Yep. That that just gets filled in. From there, it's just going to stay what's there. Yeah. yeah. They're, well, they're concrete, and part of it is is because we're looking at that, that needs to be a little bit of an angle point in the mm -hmm. sidewalk, too, to get people pointed north instead of the angle. So that would get a big part of it. Okay. So we need to go back across the street, sounds like. Okay. Well, we have two thirds of it there, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. We just want to make sure that everybody's on the same page with what needs to go back so that we don't do it twice. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. All right, uh, planning commission comments, anything? Um, I don't think you need us for anything at this point. Uh, hopefully, um, hopefully this project will end up, I, again, I will say it again, it's a 30-year lifetime. Make sure you do it the way everybody wants it. And then go from there. Get one shot. Figure out how you're going to pay for it. But again, $11,000 spent over 30 years. Uh, and that's, it's, it's time to put a big white pants on and figure it out. And that, to me, that's, that's the way I would look at it. Andy, anything? Nope, not on this. 
No. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we'll look for then. Do you want to set that up going back to the mill? Or do you want Mike to do it? Or? Uh, probably be better if Mike I can count. Yeah, come here. Okay. All right. Uh, after that, then I'll look for a motion to adjourn at 611. Six Make 11. that motion to adjourn at 611. Support. Any other discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Adjourn. Okay.